Just like the guy whose feet are too big for his bed On a lonely planet, slowly spinning its way to damnation, amid the incompetence and unpreparedness of lesser space programs, one team stands resilient against the herds, putting their lives on the line to aid those who were previously unaware of the quick save option. Yes, it's the incredible adventures of Jebediah and his crack team of Kerbinauts. They are the Blunderbirds. Saving the Kerbin race, one stranded explorer at a time. You guys wrote to me in your tens, begging me, nay, Demanding, nay, maybe just politely requesting, the return of the Blunderbirds series. And so it is with great pleasure that we can uh, sort of re-restart, reboot, or uh, uh, continue this uh, this journey of rescuing Redditors um, from their uh, unfortunate predicaments. And here we have Jebediah here, stranded on the surface of Minma, since... You know, I've never actually done a Blunderbirds mission to Minmus. I mean, I did one, but it was a Kerbal that I'd left stranded there, or at least my friend Laura had left stranded there, so it wasn't really as organic as this series tends to be, where it's other players stranding their Kerbals. So I thought, hey, you know, people seem to... I, as far as my videos go, generally people seem to respond the best to Mun, Minmus, and Juna videos. And I mean, I've done normal Blunderbirds missions to Mun and Juna. In fact, I think I've done two. Well, I have done two to Juna. So I thought, you know, it would only be a good idea. It would be a good idea to do one to Minmus as well. And so here is the craft we're going to be using. It is a prototype SSTR I've been working on. I was essentially just playing around with various kind of shapes and things to try and come up with a design that looks pretty. It looks good, basically. I went, I prioritised the aesthetic. So, you know, as I said, this is very much still within the prototype stage. So it's not too kind of. It doesn't really have that much range, at least. It doesn't have the kind of range I wanted to have by the time I finished fine-tuning it, and it has a few performance issues that will, uh, you know, become apparent as this video goes along. But I think overall it's a pretty good starting point. In fact, it's rather reminiscent aesthetically uh, to Blunderbird. Oh God, I'm on the spot now. I think it was Blunderbird Four. It's the one where I rescued Mark Thrym's Kerbals from SETI, which is the equivalent of Minmus in Galileo's Planet Pack. So in a way, this is kind of like a nice cyclical design to go with. I mean, SETI, it's like in Galileo's Planet Pack, oh, this is again, stretching now. It's almost like seven months ago, is it? I don't even know. It was a long time ago, though. Um, so Gale, so it's rather than Kerbin, you have a planet called Gale, and that has two satellites around it, I think. One is called SETI. It's about as far out as Minmus, or no, I don't know. It's one of the two satellites. I don't really know what I'm talking about here. It's a, it's a satellite that orbits the equivalent of Kerbin and Galileo's planet back. So there was the good. That, that, that's, that, that's that. So um, yeah, maybe I should talk about the flight plan for a second. We are fairly far into the flight plan at this point, but it essentially boils down to accelerating to about 440 meters per second at sea level, and then beginning to ascend. Well, we were ascending gradually, but remaining relatively flat until we reached 440 meters per second, at which point the rapiers, you know, kind of get a little kick of speed once they've passed that speed threshold and broken through that sort of barrier. And then we can begin to rapidly accelerate all the way to about 200 kilometers above the surface, at which point we can activate the nuclear engines to help push us along because the rapiers will start to be dropping off at that point. And then we can fire up a little bit of oxidizer just to give us a small kick to get us on the way into orbit. Although, to be honest, this would probably work without any oxidizer whatsoever, given my, um, in retrospect, I probably could have done this without any oxidizer whatsoever. I mean, we only had 220 units of it anyway, which is not a particularly significant amount, at least not uh, significant in regard to the actual amount of liquid fuel and overall ratios of this thing, but yeah, whatever. So, we have a fair amount of delta V in orbit, uh, just over 2,000 meters per second, so easily enough to do uh, Minmus. My ultimate goal for this craft is to make it Duna capable. That was the original plan for the SSTI sent to SETI 
in the uh, Blunderbirds episode 4, was that? I think we went before, didn't we? That was the original plan for that, to get it to go to Juna, but it just couldn't because it only had two nuclear engines, which is just not enough in terms of a uh, mass to, um, a thrust to weight ratio. <laughs> I don't know what I was trying to say with mass, but in terms of a thrust to weight ratio, two nuclear engines does not cut it for Juna. Uh, four tends to be a good standard to go for, but you can get away with three depending on your uh, craft's mass and things like that, but four is generally a pretty safe amount to go with. Again, mileage varies depending on the craft, but I thought four is a good one to go with, so that's why this thing has four nuclear engines when, when we're talking about Mimbus. This is very much overkill for what we need it to do, but bear in mind this is a prototype for what will eventually, hopefully, be a Duna SSTO. So that's kind of why I've got four nuclear engines there, but as I say, it needs a lot of fine-tuning in order before, we, before we're able to get the Delta V required to do a Duna landing. I'd like to get at least... Just for kind of the safety net of being able to make the mission definitely, definitely possible, I'd like to get at least kind of 2,000 more meters per second of Delta V out of this, which seems like a tall order, I guess, now I say it out loud, but I think with a little bit of more efficient flying, because the ascent of this craft wasn't the best, I did almost lose control at one point to flip out on to my, like, flip out and start going backwards, but luckily I managed to fight back some control. But, uh, no, I think we should be able to do it. I think, I think it's definitely possible. It won't take too long. Anyway... Here we are, burning for Minmus. Good, good job, by the way. And then didn't actually talk about anything that was going on on screen. But again, I hope you, um, I hope you figured it out. Um, I'm still kind of a bit nasally from my uh, seasonal allergies. My hay fever medication seems to be starting to uh, uh, win the fight uh, that the fight that my body fights every summer. Uh, but I seem to be now getting on top of my allergies. So hopefully, my voice will begin to will start to sort of normalise. So hopefully by next week, <laughs> the commentary will be better. So, um, yeah. So what else What else do I need to cover in this commentary? Now I'm at a bit of a gap whilst our ship is just burning for Mimbus. Uh, I should give a shout out to um, the producer. I think that was the term I promised I would give uh, Diamond VIP members. Uh, the producer of this video, in part, is uh, Luke Dawson, who uh, is, is, is a Matt Lown Diamond VIP, the first first ever so on, on my patreon i have like tier I, 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 I really hate shilling out patreon like this but I, I it was part of the it was part of the terms of if you give a certain amount so I, i'm now honoring that if you donate um a certain amount you get diamond vip status which means you get listed as a producer of the uh the closest kerbal video to the donation or at least when it gets all gets processed and informed to you by patreon that it's all gone through uh and so that is luke dawson is a is a producer of this episode of the Blunderbirds and just Matt Lowen videos in general. So thank you very much, Luke Dawson. Um, this little video was also sponsored by Squarespace, Audible.com, and Dollar Shave Club. Um, it wasn't, but if those companies would like to sponsor me, because I feel like I'm the only YouTuber, they don't. So, you know, guys, come on. I want I want in on this. I want in on this group. How do I get involved in this? Does anyone here uh, or oh, Grammarly? Is Grammarly like an upcoming one? I feel like Squarespace and Audible were like st almost memes at that point because everyone was sponsored by them. Um, and then they just seem to have died down a little. They seem to have chilled out a little bit. Although, I am sponsored by Loot Crate, so there's always that, lootcrate.com slash map, you know. That's not even a joke. Uh, that's, I can't, I st I'm still, almost two years later, I still can't really believe that they let me have that, just map as the custom URL, so there you go. Anyway, we're getting very... Uh, I don't, okay, 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 I'm done shilling now, okay? I didn't even mean... I didn't even intend for this to even be in the commentary, but there you go, whatever. Here we are on Mimus. Let's <laughs> let's get back to the... Let's get back to the subject at hand and talk about the footage for once. Uh, because Lord knows I never do that in my videos. There's the, um, the stranded vessel. We can burn retrograde. Um, obviously, aiming my trajectory, the blue line trajectory, to be slightly ahead of the um, stranded vessel to account for the fact that Mimus is going to rotate a little bit as we descend and then it's essentially just a case of eyeballing it to be honest. I, I'm thinking about doing a more in-depth commentary about how to do uh, rescue rendezvous landings uh, in air quotes properly. I never ever do this but I used to do it when I was very kind of not new to the game but new to the, like, the concept of rescuing and on the ground rendezvous if that makes sense so it involves a little bit of trigonometry a bit of mathematics calculating which to me now it's like it's not i i play ksp predominantly for fun and i don't find trigonometry very fun and i, I think it's more sort of satisfying to just wing it and eyeball it and you know get close enough that way and getting close enough speaking of which here we go so you may have seen a weird sort of awkward cut 
a moment ago. That's just because the visuals started glitching out and all the surfaces started appearing wavy. So I quickly just made a quick save and then reloaded that quick save and then it seemed to fix the visual glitches. So I think I'm still pretty sure it's either Scatterer or Planet Shine. My, my, uh, I, I think it's probably Planet Shine, but I'm not quite sure. So, um, yeah, that's why there was kind of a weird cut just then. But here we are, a little cinematic rolling up to Jebediah's capsule. And, uh, I applied the brakes and I didn't realize they were as weak as they were, so I overshot it a little bit, but there's a nice little cinematic UI-less, uh, shot of us deploying the solar panels, the, uh, the aerial, and the ladder. And with, with that, Valentina can disembark the vessel and go and check on Jeb. So we have a full crew in that space plane, just in case Jebediah, uh, you know, needs a little bit of extra help. So we've got a whole full medical team in there, just in case there was a very localized Ebola outbreak on Minmus. We could, you know, help Jeb out there, and then we can get him back on the ship, on his way to Kerbin. But of course, we need to plant the obligatory Blunderbird's flag at this point. Although I'm going to leave... Um, Reddit user uh, SquishyBanana75 totally didn't pause the commentary to check what that username was. I'm going to leave their flag very much intact because people did complain that I was taking down their flags in these videos, which I didn't mean to cause offence or like hurt anyone. I was just, I don't know why I did it. I just thought it was funny, maybe. But you know, a lesson learned. I've, I've acknowledged the criticisms and feedback. We're going to leave the flags up from now on. And there's a nice little cinematic shot once again. But we haven't got a moment to waste. Jebedar is very hungry. And he's been stranded on Minmus for a long time now. And he needs to get home. So we need to just get there. And we are faced with a slight logistical uh, issue of us facing the side of a mountain. So we need to uh, do quite an aggressive pitch up. Just make sure we clear that top ridge. But, um, you know, spoiler alert, we, we made it. It was fine. Um, very close though, <laughs> very close. Let's just uh, wave for it. There we go, and just cleared the edge. So there we go, and then it's just a simple case of circularizing at our apoapsis. In fact, in I believe, if memory serves me correctly, I did do this mission. Not, well, I was about to say, I did this mission before I did this commentary, but I think that's obvious. This isn't a live commentary. I mean, it was a while ago when I flew this mission. Like, it was yesterday. And you know, I can't remember that far in the past, so I believe we did two circularizations at Apo... Well, not two... We did two burns at Apoapsis. I did one burn at Apoapsis, raised the Apoapsis to somewhere else, and then... Well, actually, I just looked at the screen, and that's exactly what's happening, so I don't even know why I'm bothering to say this, because you guys would have figured this out just from watching the footage, so... Whatever, maybe I'm just... Maybe I'm just bad at this whole commentary thing. Maybe I need to get some more practice, I don't know. So... Um, I, I mean, I feel like I could just go on another divergence and talk about something that's not about the footage, but we're so close to the end that I feel like I wouldn't have time to really add any meaningful conversation. You know, like I normally do. I normally have very deep philosophical debate, self-debate on this channel, but, you know, I haven't got time anymore. So we're going to have to just... Do, it's going to be a case of rambling now until the end. But you can see I've created a maneuver node here to get ourselves on a nice Kerbin encounter aiming for about sort of between 35 and 55 kilometers above the surface. You've got a little bit of wiggle room because you can point your ship more towards the prograde vector and not deviate too much from that if your parapsis is quite low. If your parapsis is quite high, you can be more aggressive with the uh, pointing of the radial in and radial out to create more air resistance and force that apoapsis down. Long and short of it is what I'm trying to get at is here is that we don't really have enough delta V to do a full Kerbin circularization, lower our orbit sufficiently to get a safe re-entry and land at the Kerbal Space Center runway. Using engines alone, so we're going to be doing the bulk of our slowing down using aero braking, which I think is pretty standard fare for SSTOs at this point, but just in case some of you may have never seen an S2 video before, um, that's kind of what we're doing. So yeah, we're kind of fairly low in the atmosphere now, and our parapsis, um, our apoapsis, sorry, is quite relatively low uh, at this point, so we can do a few little rolls to uh, get our force our apoapsis down very quickly by generating lots and lots of air resistance then you know just to try and keep that at bay and not a and a not for a not force our apoapsis down too much and also keep our parapsis to reasonably high altitude um, we can just do some rolls and then cruise along at prograde so we don't you know we don't go we don't do it, we don't overdo it wow what a horrible set of sentences i don't think i said anything articulate there but hopefully with my random words and the footage combined, you might have pieced together some sort of coherency. 
um, from that sentence. So again, now we're getting nice and high in the atmosphere, I can be quite aggressive with rolling around and just creating as much air resistance as I can, and I think that's pretty good for an apoapsis height, to be honest. I mean, what is that now? About 130,000 meters, which is pretty... It's pretty close to the common line at this point, so I'm happy to circularize an engine at this point. I mean, look, we got... Well, we've started burning now, but we did have over 500 meters per second of delta V, which is, you know, basically nothing. Basically nothing? Basically too much. <laughs> I was like, basically, what's the opposite of nothing again? And I, I blanked out, so I said too much. Whatever. We have more than enough delta V to get back to the Kerbal Space Center. I mean, this thing could... We, we, we essentially need like 20 meters per second now, just enough to lower our periapsis below the kind of Kármán line, and then we can just glide down to the Kerbal Space Center. But, you know, we've got a little bit left over, so we don't have to be too kind of accurate with our descent and our um, landing trajectory, because we have a lot of fuel left over just to do the final bit of... Uh, navigation on air-breathing rapier engines just to get ourselves on an encounter with the Kerbal Space Center runway, which is just as well because we are on a slightly slanted orbit. Obviously, Minmus does not, it's not on an equatorial Kerbin orbit, so it is a little bit harder to get back on a perfect Kerbin equatorial orbit than it is, say, from the Mun or somewhere like that. Uh, but it was fine. Again, we have lots of fuel left over. So we could do a little bit of forcing our trajectory by banking as we re-entered, and then we're going to use the last of our fuel to uh, cruise back to the runway on air-breathing rapiers. So, uh, yeah, I guess I can probably speed up the footage at this point. We don't need to... Um, it's not the most enthralling footage to watch at this point. We are just cruising over the ocean. That beautiful, beautiful ocean. Uh, shout out to Scatterer, the mod. Uh, that's what causes that great ocean effect, and obviously all the lighting, the advanced lighting. We've also got uh, environmental visual enhancements with the stock visual enhancements config files. People keep messaging me, how do you get the stock? If you just go on the stock visual enhancements like forum page, there's a beautiful broken down walkthrough and tutorial as to how you install it. So please stop messaging me how to do it, because I'm like, I'll get it wrong. If I try and tell you myself, I'll make a mistake. I mean, God knows how many mistakes I've made in this commentary, and I'm the one flying the mission. So just read the Stock Vision Enhancements forum page, it tells you how to do it. And with that, here we are, cruising down nice and gently, trying to aim for about just under 100 meters per second. You don't want to be going too slow because you'll be ending up slamming into the runway too fast because your vertical speed will be too high, but you also don't want to be going like too fast in terms of horizontal speed because then you'll be, well, you'll be going too fast and you'll like over, you'll overstress the landing gears. But I didn't do either of those things. Here we are, touched down. And that's pretty much the end of the commentary, to be honest. So, uh, if you liked this sort of thing, then this is the sort of thing you'll like. Um, you can subscribe to me, obviously. You guys probably know that at this point. You know how YouTube works. This is my Twitter. I like to share lots of uh, dank KSP memes. That was the cringiest sentence I've ever said out loud. But I am trying to, I'm trying to play the Twitter game, and I seem to be getting quite a good response to that. Obviously, shout out, uh, shout out to the producer earlier, um, to Patreon is in the description. And on screen, if we do a little cinematic zoom out here, we can get some links. Up on screen here, on the top left, we have the full Blunderbirds playlist. And we have some other videos. I mean, you can read them. I don't think I need to really explain them every time, because I feel like it's a bit patronizing. So whatever, like I said, Twitter, um, Patreon, and Discord. I didn't mention Discord, but Discord is in the description as well. Really, um... Yeah, Discord. This you should join the Discord. It's great. It's it's a lot of fun. We um, we talk about nothing really, but it's it's great. It's a great community. Please be my friend. 